they have a very, very cool guest on the show today. Mr. Karim Bokhtor is on the episode and I met him here in Melbourne, Australia, at the conference of Stephen Bartlett, Diary of the CEO. Stephen Bartlett came out and we were there for obviously the same reasons to watch him um, and listen to his business sense and his inspiration and mindset of, 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 of to get up and do something in their lives about their careers, right? And that's exactly what Karim's doing. He's been on a bit of a journey, um, arriving in Australia at two years old, um, being, you know, chased out of his country of Egypt, which is a terrifying story that him and his family had to go through. Uh, I will let him explain it, but it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, he's been on one hell of a journey since being a child identified as this person that's not being able to speak English when he could, um, developing a stutter, going through all this childhood trauma that he had to endure, living in council houses and commission houses here in Melbourne. I'm not going to tell you anymore, but he has created this amazing, amazing business. We've got a bit of a two-part series to this show because he's also going to be back next week. And he's going to do something to me and we're going to record it. And I'm really scared. Um, it will become very obvious in the show, but he has developed a, a method called the box tour method. He now owns and runs a leadership business. He's absolutely fantastic. He gets flown everywhere and has been creating some amazing projects. We will go into it. I'll put everything in the show notes. If you want to make contact with him, no doubt you will. After you hear him on the episode, we'll be right back with Karim. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Karim, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Thank you, mate. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm, I'm, thank you so much for joining me on Leading Our Own Way. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. And I'm so excited because we have, I think we have quite a lot in common, to be fair. Um, but first of all, how's your day? It's been well. Yeah, it's been good. Mm -hmm. um, it's always jam-packed. You know, I'm always having to network or visit that person and see, you know, um, whoever needs to see me to, yeah, for, for me to get my... Um, my startup up and, you know, up yeah. from the ground. Well, we'll get into that. I know we're going to touch base on that, but before I ask um, how you're leading your own way, um, I want to pretty quickly say, uh, explain how we met. Um, we have something, the things that we have in common, uh, we didn't really speak all that much on the day we met, did we? But where we did meet, we met at our good friend, Stephen Bartlett, Diary of the CEO conference in the city of Melbourne and um, you sat next to me and um, we, I don't know, we just, we started talking, but then we just, we were so zoned in on Stephen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk all that much, but the words we yeah. did say, I knew I needed to make contact with you. And uh, I, I hope you felt the same. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, wow. Like I've always felt that um, there are no coincidences. And as soon as I met you, I'm like, we've got to keep in touch. Absolutely. So tell me, why were you at, um, what attracted you or what does attract you to Diary of the CEO, Stephen Bartlett? Um, I've always loved his stuff. Um, growing up, I've always been connected to hearing other people's stories. Yeah. And not just, you know, just like the top surface level stuff. I love knowing the the deep stories, the, the things that... Um, are much more meaningful, you know. It's the yeah. connection that I can make to the other person. I think that's the reason why I really connected with Stephen Bartlett's show. Yeah, I agree. And I, that's, I mean, there's something else I don't even know. I'm, my first thing is connection and relationships. You know, I think it's, uh, you, I feel you're the same, but there's always been jokes about how much I talk. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was an old, there was a yeah people used to say i could talk for england when i lived there but uh, <laughs> now it's I could talk for australia 
Um, yeah, I'm attracted to Stephen. I mean, I'm inspired by Stephen because I suppose the podcast is partly the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, mm. trying to turn, you know, the things that I've been through into the positive and and, and, and share stories and meet people like yourselves and, and, and take pieces of everybody. It's, I suppose, it, you know what, it's kind of my own little diary, I suppose. Um, but yeah, um, just off the, off the cuff, what some of the, what type of guests attract you to Stephen's show? Um, you're right, and it's the word, it's the type of guests. Um, I love hearing from the per the people who came from nothing. Yes, the people who really struggled that came from nothing. Um, they're the ones who are able to tell a story. You know, they tell a story because in those moments when you can so much become a victim, they chose to become the victor against all odds, and that's the thing that really drives me. Um, yeah, and just because it resonates with my story too. And we will get into that. I'm, I'm excited for you to share your story and I'm excited for everybody to hear your story. Uh, but before we do go down that road, how, what are you doing today? What are you doing to, in the modern day? How are you leading your own way right now, Karim? Um, I'm following my, what I feel is my life's purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is help people get out of their own way uh, using advanced hypnotherapy. And we have a nice little, uh, well, I don't know if I should, well, I've got to say it now, but we're going to do something special next week for part two, aren't we? We are. Oh, I'm we nervous. Are. I'm not going to. I'm not. Can, what are you going to do to me next week, mate? I want to make you pluck like a chicken. <laughs> I'm, going to, you... I'm going to ask your partner what, what uh, she wants to see out of you and I'm going to, I'm going to follow through. My Lord. I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, that's never happened to me before. Um, I've never been hypnotized, so, um, no, I'm excited. And I think it'll be quite exciting for people to, uh, to see it too. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, your business, what is your business and, 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 and explain to us, give us a, a view of what your, your, your mission statement or your purpose is within the business and, and sure, the type of sure. people that you meet. So a lot of the times when people, um, you know, they want to get ahead in their life or in their career, or they want to earn more money in their business. They think that it's like, you know, they need to, earn, they need to learn an, like another course or they need to, um, you know, improve their resume or, you know, it's a marketing um, deficiency that they've got, or it's a business strategy. But in nine times out of 10, the businesses that I've worked with, um, it's all about leadership. It's all about within them, their decisions, why they can't do things. Um, it's all about that. And what I've noticed is people are looking in the wrong direction. And this was certainly the, the, the thing with me as well. Um, and it's the reason why I went down this path of learning about human behavior. I was stuck in my own way. I couldn't get ahead in my business as a leader. I couldn't lead my team. I couldn't communicate properly with, with my wife. Um, and yeah, and I just said, I just have to figure out a, a solution. And, and we, we get, we're definitely obviously going to talk about how you were stuck in your own way, but on a daily basis and the, the clients that you do help the leaders that you help typically how are they stuck in their way what is what are the traits of those leaders who and how are they stuck so typically the the way or the reason why leaders become leaders is because they've had some type of uh story in their life so they become resilient enough to become a leader mm -hmm. but it's often the same reason why it, like it stops them from becoming getting into the next gear as an example um some pe some leaders hate being told what to do mm. right so it's taken up it's it's helped them up and up into a certain level but now they've had to run a team and manage a team um getting feedback and getting some communication from from the rest of the team they're going to run blind you know just they want to do it their way. They don't want to listen to anyone else. 
um, and that itself causes its own its own problems. Yeah, uh, and because I I find my experiences, uh, I've been in education, but I've also worked in f um, financial uh, management type industries as well, and I've always found that it's like what Simon Sinek says, you know. We all have the capacity to be a parent. We all have the capacity to be a leader. Does it mean we all want to be a leader? And does it mean we all should be a leader? Mm. Same with parenting, right? You know, we all have the capacity to be a leader to to, to the most ex, to the most occasions. You know, obviously yeah. this, on the slight occasion we can't. But that's for obviously other reasons. And but then, do does everybody want to be a, be a parent? No, and should everybody be a parent? Um, and is the question um and sometimes people leaders become leaders because they're maybe the most experienced in their position in their jobs and they're really good at their jobs but then they have to learn this whole new facet of leadership which is a completely different role you you becoming a boss rather than a leader who's supposed to make their job easier on a daily basis which obviously then inspires the people to come to work every single day you know um i've always found i've always struggled with that side of things um and and i've always witnessed that these leaders it's not all their fault necessarily they're not getting the support that they need from their bosses or their departments you know uh, and, and mm -hmm. to be supported in that role do you do you find that do you see that as this do you see the same or do you feel something different yeah definitely so um there's always this thing of you know are managers made or are they or are they born you know that's that's the saying and uh it's all about leadership so i find that sometimes within within organizations or businesses um there's a lot of pressure just to um bring people up just because they've been in the business for such a long time and you know they've they've done their time and you know they want to they want to raise but a lot of the time uh what happens is that they just they bring these guys up girls and guys and they don't have the leadership skills. They're not, they're not natural leaders. Um, I don't, I believe that it's not for everyone. And the organization goes through a lot of stress. And that's why you see like people within the, the people within the same organization, you've got say three teams, all three teams could be different. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's, it's the leadership that plays a big role. It's that person that's that's creating either the tension or creating uh, a really good environment for the rest of the team. Yeah, yeah. Because I was um, something I've been reading uh, about stress levels and chronic stress, acute stress, you stress, and so on, and cortisol being the stress hormone in the body. And I was listening. I was talking to. I was sorry. I was reading um, uh, some research, and it was saying about if you go into a meeting and you come out of the meeting very stressed, it's usually because the person conducting the meeting is stressed and the cortisol is seeped out into the environment from yeah. them in, in, into you. Um, it, have you ever heard of any, have you ever heard anything like that yourself or? Yeah, it's, um, it's very common. Like if people think that the, the culture of, of an organization is just like, it's just out of thin air. Yeah. But what usually happens is it usually comes from the top down. So if the person up the top is feeling some type of stress, um, it can very well just spill over into the rest of the team. Yeah. And it may not be necessary. It may not be necessary for the rest of the team to feel that stress just because, you know, you're possibly having, having a bad day and, you know, you're possibly this, this quarter's numbers aren't, aren't doing well. So you, so you blame the rest of the team and, you know, you're trying to, um, uh, you know, light, Ought to match just so yeah. they can work harder, but it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's a snowball effect, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's the effect of many things. It's not, it's not, it's never just one thing. Yeah. So, okay. Why, why this area of your career now? Why did you choose this part of your career? Why did you choose hypnotherapy um, in, when going into business to support leaders? Why that particular area for you? Um. I went into business very confident thinking that I knew a lot about business. Um, I went into, so I, I was, I was in leadership in pharmaceutical roles. Um, I was in, 
I was then in medical devices as well. So I went into surgery. I was in surgery with, with doctors coaching them on how to use our products while they were operating. So I thought, you know, I had reached, you know, the, like a really good stage in sales and in, um, leadership. So then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do something. I'm going to start doing something on my own. It wasn't the first time. So I went out and I did and did a business, went into business. And it was the first week that I went into, um, it was the first week that my wife gave birth to my son mm-hmm. that we settled in. And I didn't really understand, um, the impact that, that would have. You know, no one really told me or sat me down and said, hey, it's going to be really tough. Um, I just thought, you know, my son will be born. Um, you know, my wife will be at home feeding him, looking after him. I'll go to work and to the business and come home and everything will be like, you know, rainbows and lollipops and, you know, yeah. it's all, all, all uh, you know, rosy. Mm-hmm. I quickly found out that it wasn't like that. Um, my son had colic. So for those who don't know, it's um, a digestive uh, challenge that babies have. They can't um, digest certain foods like cow's milk. Um, so he had an intolerance to that, but we didn't know. So he was waking up every 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, wow. And um, I was going into work on the back foot. Yeah. And I, w- I used to use sleep a lot as a, and I didn't know this as a coping mechanism for my anxiety. I didn't even know that I had anxiety at the time. I thought it was just life. Mm-hmm. And um, slowly but surely, my business started to spiral out of control because I couldn't make the right decisions. I couldn't lead. Uh, I was going into work, seeing people's mouths, seeing people's mouths move, but I wasn't hearing what they were saying because I was so sleep sleep deprived. And also so anxious, like all my anxiety started to come up again Mm -hmm. and my depression. And, um, yeah, the business got worse and worse. And, um, it got to a point where I was so scared that I couldn't pay people's wages. I couldn't pay rent. And I had just finished my MBA as well. And I had started and done many businesses before that, but there was no, there was nowhere in the, in my MBA manual right? Hmm. To say, if this is happening, go here. Um, I had hired the best marketers to help improve my business. I had been to counselors. I had done everything. Hmm. Nothing was working. So uh, one day I just felt like I was so stuck. And one day Alex came into my, into my room and she found me curled up into a ball just crying hysterically because I was like shitting myself. Uh, I just had, you know, I was a new father. I couldn't provide for him. I felt like I couldn't be a, you know, a really good husband. I couldn't provide for my wife. Uh, I was just doing a really bad job. Yeah. Especially after the reason why, like there's a whole backstory to this. So growing up as a child, my parents escaped persecution from Egypt. So we came here when I came here when I was two. Dad had a um, a very successful wholesaling petrol business back in Egypt. Yeah, uh, he did really well. So I think you know business is in my bones. I love business. And he came down and um, yeah, so he left everything in Egypt, came here without a job, uh, the language, or even money. Mm-hmm. So we were homeless for a good month or so. Uh, we had to stay with other people um, by the time we found a home. Um, the person who was meant to send my dad his life savings didn't. So if you can imagine parents um, going overseas to a whole new place without any money or any or any, any, any language mm-hmm. or even a job, it's a very scary time. Yeah. Um, the government, um, thankfully, um, put us up into housing commissions. But my parents were like, oh, my gosh, like, what did we do? Like, we came from a really good lifestyle, from a really good life. Uh, obviously, they had to leave, but compared to what they were living at, um, 
to for me seeing things that I shouldn't have seen. You know, I was seeing a whole lot of violence. I was seeing a whole lot of drugs, uh, needles on the floor, um, violence um, in in the housing commissions. And was this in Australia or back in? This is in Australia. This yeah, is in this Australia. Is, this is this was when I moved to Australia. So, so before we go to the Australia part, then let's go back to the persecution. Uh, you're two years old. Uh, yeah. You're coming from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about why why that um, persecution occurred. What, what paint that picture for us? There was a lot of political unrest, mm-hmm. um, and the the government at the time was more a um, the dominant figure was more around uh, the Islamic um, extremism, right? And we, because as Christians we were we are the minority and we were singled out. We didn't they didn't like that a Christian was making more money uh, than them. So they went around the the street and it was like something out of The Simpsons, The Simpsons, where Sideshow Bob was uh, calling out names of people who they or people who he wasn't going to uh, kill all right and he wasn't and he didn't call that bart simpson but um these men were literally on the road with like a big microphone reading out names of people who who they were going to call and they yelled out amir Bokhtor. join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way don't forget to subscribe we'll see you then